All right, we're going. Okay, welcome to Jared Knox. I'm Chris. That over there in Hots, the home of the Spartans of Bixby, is Zach. We are two Oklahoma varsity high school football coaches and former athletes that during one fateful indoor freshman slash JV baseball practice discover that we have similar interests in all things nerd culture. Now, <clears throat> stop what you're doing. Don't jump off the Jared Knox bus just yet. We're back. We're sorry there was a hiatus. Life happens. It's not like anything bad happened. I think we were just a little lazy. Um, yeah. It's a, it was a bit of a back and forth. But don't jump off the bus, smash a five-star rating, and leave a review. If you do, we'll read it on here. Something that makes me feel, you know, a little bit more better about our hiatus is that it seems like most podcasters took July off. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the ones I right. listen to, there's you just one. Said more, you just said more better. What are we, like, yeah. I'm on, a man. math guy. I'm not, you we're, know. We're so, we're so rusty. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like I, there's a guy that I listen to and his podcast hasn't had a new release since like early July. So it's like, we're fine. We're That's good. Just like us. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think the hit and miss of July was epic, wait till next month. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm listening. We're going to do this. We're, we're going to get four football movies in because we've picked four football movies. We're going yeah. to streamline our entire process. So this is a little not behind the scenes because now this is what it's going to be. Not going to get two episodes a week, probably one dump, either a Saturday morning or a late Saturday slash early Sunday now. Yeah, yeah. The best, the best whatever the best we can do. Depends on when the I mean, game is. You know, if, if it's a 15, 20 minute, you know, episode, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I would, but we've picked four um, football movies. Uh, yeah. I picked one that I love and one that I Blind don't side. so much. Huh? So I said blindside and the one you love? Yeah, of course. I hate varsity <laughs> blues now that I'm a coach and not a player. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do have a story about that. It's pretty funny. And then you chose. Uh, I chose any given Sunday. And uh, Division Three football's finest. I could not remember what the other one was. That's why. Yeah. I was trying. Oh boy. Have you seen Division Three? <laughs> I could act. You want me act it out right now? <laughs> <laughs> I could go through the whole movie. I just the opening. I just drank that protein. Just you know what I mean? <laughs> Mixing the eggs and all that crap. Oh God. Yeah. I love that. Uh, yeah, I love that movie. Okay. Anywho, um, again. We're going to try to – this one will be a good long one. We've got a little bit of time packed in here. My wife is at cheer practice, um, so I've got a lot of time. I don't know what Zach's doing out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm up here uh, getting our state of the programs ready, uh, as many as I can do before I have to go get my physical to drive a bus. You got pushed to day two? Yeah, dude. Me and T.S. So, hold on. Did you not hear us all talking about the fact that you could have just went yesterday? Um, no, I knew you could go yesterday. I just didn't want to. I got you. I got you. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, I knew that I was going to be up here. One, I, I knew you. I was going to be up here working out. Two, I needed to get these state of the programs at least up here. And then three, I was like, I'm, I'm just going to get my physical done. Okay. So, just a word to the wise, a warning, a veteran, a veteran thing I'm about to tell you. Okay. You did you already work out? I did, yes. Okay, good. Because if you take any caffeine before a physical, you need to understand this. What are you, 20, 20 now? No, 26, yeah. yeah. Um, your heart rate, like your blood pressure, will they'll red flag you and you won't pass your physical. Did that happen to you? Uh no, because I knew better. That's why yesterday I could have oh, okay. I could I could have slept in. Um but I didn't like we didn't have to be it. We didn't have to be up there until later. I didn't. I woke up, did my same routine, 430 alarm in there at 5 a.m. And then I was able to calm down mm. from that. And then it's like, 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 yeah. So offense guys, they don't really have to worry about it that much. Uh, like last year, I think uh, a certain coach, um, uh, I'm not going to say names, but he's a very, very important piece of the puzzle. Maybe the most important piece. He got red flagged and they were like, have you had any caffeine this morning? He said, well, I drank a pot of coffee and two Mountain Dews. And it's like, well, yeah, that's why. But you're going to have to get another physical. 
when yeah. I was at Stigler, when I, when I was like your age, um, the first time I went to Stigler, I was like, I, I was in the weight room at Stigler drinking pre-workout and they were like, Hey, um, you weren't in on this email cause you came in late, but can you go get your physical real quick? I'm like, yeah, sure. I got my blood pressure checked with pre-workout coursing my veins. And they're like, you're going to like, you're going to die at 30 right. years old, sir. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like I just did a pre-workout. And she was like, Oh my God. They put me on like medication. And I'm like, I don't, I don't need this, but yeah, no, I'm good. I just worked out. I'm fine. Welcome. No, I hadn't worked out. Oh, hadn't worked out yet. Like this, get a phone call from the AD and I'm like, Oh, yeah, all right, my bad. Yeah. So anyways, had to go back two weeks later and do it again. I remember when they did it. I think it was like my first or second year here. I didn't have my CDL, but like I still went and got my physical, which now that I'm thinking about it, like I didn't need to do that. But um Dot your eyes <laughs> and cross your T's always. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Why did I do that? But <laughs> I did it like right after uh elementary spa or something. Like they were oh, up yeah. in the Spartan room. And I went up there and they're like, oh, your heart rate's really high. Yeah, I was outside in the 100 degree heat coaching. I'm, my heart rate's going to be high. They don't, they don't care. They don't, they're worried about your survival. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so yeah, there we go. All right. What do we have? So we are, um, man, we have a lot of stuff we could talk about. Yeah. So, um, Let's go ahead, and uh, I have a story I want to tell. <clears throat> it, it, it would have been a cold open with previous episodes, but now that we're doing StreamYard, uh, I just I have to get this one off my chest. Okay. We have a uh, we have a defensive lineman that is, uh, I believe the word was thrown around that he's one of the best football players on our team, and he only plays one position. Um, yeah, that was thrown around. Yes, and he is a he's a war daddy. I mean, he's a go getter. He's he's way too small for what you would picture a starting defensive lineman for a six, a school for any school really to be like super effective. Once you get past like the, just the country strong boys and three, a four, a, um, but he likes very, very heavy music. And so when he oh, was, yeah. on, when he was on the rack, um, they were playing some type of, you know, I don't want to throw a satanic out there because I know it's like <laughs> that look, but it's it's very like, like I'm into heavier music. Some yeah. people some people think I'm just into stupid music, but I'm into a little bit heavier stuff. That's too heavy for me. It was like, way if, too heavy. if it just sounds like the fourth of July, but all the fireworks are inside of a metal trash can mm. and then some guys in there screaming, I gotta I, I'm not too into that kind of stuff. But that's what was going on. And then a very um one of my favorite sophomores, very innocent little lineman. This guy's like fourth stringer. He walks up, he's like, Coach Cole, do you know what the name of this song is? I was like, Well, I can ask the guy playing and I'll be right back. So I walk up and I'm like, Hey, man, uh, what's the name of this song? He's like, You like that? And I was like, Well, uh, not really, but someone's asking. And he's like, Hold his phone up. And he's like, What's it playing? It's, the song's called Hell by Filth. <laughs> the song is called Hell. Yeah. The band is Filth. I think at that point it's fair to call that satanic music if the yeah, name of the I, song is hell. I didn't think about it before I said it. <laughs> Anyways, so I just want to get that story off my chest. What you got? Uh no, that's that that's fantastic. He uh I, I think when that song was played, 90, 95, 96 percent of the weight room was uncomfortable, like visibly uncomfortable. But it was intense. It was intense. I think there were like five PRs that day. Sounds like Blades of Glory. No yeah. one knows why, but it's intense. <laughs> um, for me, what I've got is a surprising, I mean, I don't know if we're doing a weekly watch list, but like. Oh, when, for sure. Uh, I, I've got a weekly watch list, but we can we can roll through some of that. I just, it's on the forefront of my mind. Uh, there was recently a collaboration and uh, really the only Jordan Knox that will get this are, are listeners that have small children. Um, right. there was a, I watched this this morning. It like, rolled, it rolled through. I think I know where we're going with this, but go ahead. A collaboration of Miss Rachel and Blippi. Yup, and some other chick. Is that chick with Blippy? Is that chick her own thing? I don't know who that was. 
I don't know who the third one was. Yeah, she's kind of just – I think – you know what? Actually, Kenzie told me this. She thinks she's a wiggle. So it could have been a trifecta. Yeah, the wiggles. No, 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 no. She ain't a wiggle. She's the, not wiggles, a wiggle. the wiggles are British or Australian. I, I can't tell the difference. I don't know. I don't know. But, but that I, was – I don't even think my – Six month old was into it. There was a lot going on. It was too much. Just animal was, noises, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, when you get that many alphas in one room in one video, it's hard to distribute, you know, the screen time effectively. Well, it's just like, and then uh, here we are, just literally critically reviewing stupid uh, Blippy and Miss Rachel collab right now. But here we are. Um, <clears throat> it's one of those things where it's like they have their own styles and i don't know that they necessarily clash no you know, blippies or that they 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 do clash is what i'm saying not that yeah they I'm do saying. clash absolutely they do yeah like blippies like oh yeah I'm good. and this miss rachel's more of like a teacher yeah and so while he's like well i'm, I'm a fire truck blah, blah, blah. and she's just like and i'm a dog <laughs> dog like whatever you know i don't know i thought it was i thought it was out there you know yeah no for sure for sure so um, here's one, and I thought you would get a kick out of this list. Um, uh, hopefully, it'll it'll go through here. But with the recent um, Oppenheimer, which we never got to talk about Oppenheimer, um, oh, yeah. Uh, two minute thoughts on Oppenheimer. I know you could go for two hours. Uh, yeah, I can do two minutes on Oppenheimer and Barbie. I know you haven't seen Barbie, but I can I can do that too. You want me yeah. to go first for Oppenheimer? Yeah, because I can I can sum it up in like ten seconds. My thoughts. Oh. No, it's awesome. Um, fantastic acting. Uh, Christopher Nolan is probably one of the best directors of this. Uh, no, I don't even know. No, no, ever. Yeah, ever. <laughs> ever. I don't like categorize it, but no, he's one of the best ever. It's um, real simple. You can look at IMDb now. And he was in a three-way tie with like Stanley. Uh, oh my God, that was awful. Stanley Kubrick uh -huh. and Martin Scorsese with seven films. Yeah, in the top whatever, he now has eight. Yeah, and that's ranking. That's IMDb ranking, not like some one guy's list. That's like all those reviews that come in through IMDb. Um, I think it's. I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Uh Cillian or Killian Murphy is an absolute all-star. Um, and I love I love Nolan's directing style and the fact that he was able to pull all that off on the budget that he did that was less than Secret Invasion, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, later. But uh, no, it's fantastic. Uh, great movie. And it's definitely one of those, like, um, don't wait for it to hit streaming. Like, this is movie theater. You need to go pay for the, like, it's worth the price of admission. So go sit in a seat, get popcorn, and just enjoy the movie for three hours. And you're not even three hours. Like, honestly, it, it goes by pretty quick. And I, that's, that's what some people have asked me is like, I don't know if I can sit there for three hours. I'm like, oh, you can. Just, you, you can. Yeah. Me and Keela did the, we did the, we went and saw a 3 p.m. showing, got out yeah. of the theater at 6.30. So the dinner, like the big dinner rush of Tulsa Hills was kind of winding down. So we were able to get right into uh, chilies afterwards and oh, yeah. just talk about what we had seen. Um, love chilies. I, uh, man, I, yeah, I second everything you said. Cause I don't think I've got too many bad things I've heard. My, I think one thing, and I've heard other people complain about this, but I walked out of the movie theater and I was like, they, that did not need to be there. And that was for, <laughs> this isn't a huge spoiler, but when uh, I'm going to call him Han Solo, young Han Solo, uh, there's two things that he does that I'm like, I don't like that. The first one, and I talked to you about this, was the thing where it's like, well, they did. And then the audience just laughed for no reason. Oh, um, yeah. Or not no reason. It's a bit of a hu humorous delivery. I get it. But it's also like, it wasn't that funny, fellas. Come on. But yeah. it's it's kind of felt out of place. You know? I agree with that. He had to let his <laughs> side out a little bit. And then um, the other thing was when he he's like, one guy – swayed the voting some young guy from some young senator from massachusetts john kennedy oh, yeah. like, why why <laughs> like 
that just – and I know it's a weird thing because, like, it's John Kennedy. He's, he's just like – he's such a famous name, such a famous president. I'm like, you didn't need that in there. That took me just for a second out of what I was witnessing, which is Robert Downey Jr. putting in an incredible performance. There yeah. were people that were worried he'd never be able to, to get the Iron Man stigma off of him. And I think he proved, like, no, I can do this. I'm, I'm a real actor. And I thought that was awesome. Um, yeah. Anyways, great movie. The the cameos, everything. That the the it's an amazing film. Go watch it um, before it's out of theaters, like you said. Because I don't know that I'll ever like. I'll, I'll watch it again, but there's mm. no way it's ever going to be as enjoyable. No. All right, <clears throat> but this is what I saw. Um, an article by Screen Rant. Okay, um, who are not there? They have good topics, especially for our podcast, but they're not like <laughs> they're not the most like reliable source. Um, this article is titled The 10 Harsh Realities of Rewatching the Dark Knight Trilogy 11 Years Since It Has Ended. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get into this too much if you want me to expand on why they don't think something is good or why well, these realities are different. I can, but just your thoughts. We'll go real fast. It's 10 things. The first thing the Tumblr is not an effective Batmobile. I don't know how that's possible, how it's not effective. Well, that's, I, I, the one thing I think when I think about that is like, first off, it's a huge target. The, the Joker, spoiler for the Dark Knight trilogy, the Joker destroys it with one rocket launcher. Yeah. And then he has a motorcycle the next two movies. Right. It's not the best thing for getting through the streets of a city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I see where they're coming from. I can, I can see it. Yeah. You probably don't want to be driving a tank in New York City. And here's the other thing. You're going to know Batman's coming to town. Like, where do you keep that thing? He keeps it in Wayne Manor. So it's outside of city limits. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it's not an elusive thing. It's not, it's not fast enough to really, you know, I don't know. Like that's, he doesn't in the first in the first one he doesn't outrun the cops, he hides. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, number nine, the Dark Knight Rises. Bane was a major misstep. I think that's not fair because of the tragedy with Heath Ledger. I think that's the best they could have done. You think that's the best they could have done? It's pretty good, in my opinion. I I thought Tom Hardy's Bane was really good. It's just, it's, I know what they were going for with it, but also it's like, I don't know. There, there's so many theory, not theories, but there's so many things about the death of Heath Ledger that threw what the trilogy was supposed to be off. It's almost one of those things where it's like, no, like, let's get another cerebral guy in there. Let's, let's make it a, let's make it a Riddler, you know, yeah. let's make, let's make it a whatever. Um, <clears throat> so number eight, the Dark Knight Rises Joker is not Batman's arch nemesis. The, this, go wait, ahead. The Dark Knight Rises Joker. The Dark Knight's Joker? Yes. I said okay. rises too many times. Oh, but yeah. the Joker is not Batman's arch nemesis. It's not his main nemesis. That I completely disagree with that. But he, but he's not. Like who's the main the overarching villain of that trilogy? The of the trilogy? That's what they're it's the trilogy now. Oh, right? okay. Well, it's the uh, League of Assassins. Yeah, the League of Shadows. Yeah, League of Shadows. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's like a real comic booky thing to be like. It's a real comic booky thing to be like, uh, oh, the Joker's supposed to be his number one. Well, in this realistic trilogy, he probably could have been more important, but he's definitely not the main. You know, because the Joker shouldn't be, unless you're going to go years of Batman battling the Joker, which can really only happen in like comic book form. Yeah. You know, it's it's always about Bruce Wayne. It's like, well, what's the one like you can call it a misstep or you can call it the catalyst for Batman, not the catalyst. His parents' death, spoiler alert, is his catalyst. But they trained him. What yeah. he is is due to them. So it's like the fact that they're villains presents a problem. So that's kind of I think that the reason why the League of Shadows, I guess, would be the overarching villain or nemesis is again because of Heath Ledger, because 
in the Dark Knight, there's not a reference to the League of Shadows, is there? Because yeah. after the first one, he kills Ray Shal Ghul, and that's done. And then the Dark Knight happens, but then Talia is the leader. They have to bring, yeah, they have to bring all that back. Yeah, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Yep. Still, it is what it is. The movie is what it is. It is the League right. of Shadows. I'll agree. Gotta go fast to these. Batman begins shirks an important Batman idea. As in, I don't have to kill you, but I don't have to save you, Ra's al Ghul. And just lets the man lets the guy die. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like tricky, you know. It is tricky. Okay. Um, the Dark Knight number six, the Dark Knight trilogy is not as grounded as everyone makes it seem to be. <clears throat> not as grounded. So people consider it to be the most grounded. That's what made it different. Because like, well, this, no, no, this Batman could really happen. But really, the Tumblr doesn't actually exist at that time. And really, the picture they've got is Morgan Freeman with the bouncing images off of cell phones oh yeah you know what i mean yeah the nuclear bomb going off out of her <laughs> you know there's a lot of stuff that it's like, yeah. like sure it's more grounded but if you look, really get in there and start dissecting it not as grounded as you think no Heath ledger joker this is ridiculous number five Heath ledger's joker is by far the best character despite only appearing once why is that a harsh reality I don't know. I think that that's pretty much like a consensus. Yeah. So much of this is hinging on one guy. Yeah. Uh, the trilogy rush an important Batman arc. And that arc um, is um, the Dark Knight Returns is what they're putting. So it's the old, old Batman. You know what I mean? The, the, the sense of a Batman who's retired and now he has to come back out. The Dark Knight Returns is the story where um, he's yeah, a, he ends up killing Joker. Yeah, well, the Joker kills himself. Oh, yeah. But it looks like Batman does. You're thinking of the killing joke where it's like a – it's not known who if he dies or not, but it's kind of oh. – um, Dark Knight Trilogy leaves countless Batman stories untold. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it has to. It's three movies. Yeah, it has yeah. to. Ugh. Villains are entirely absent. The idea of Batman's sidekick – as is at best an afterthought and the Cape Crusader only faces the Joker once again, if you're a big comic book guy, the fact that the dark Knight trilogy is a more grounded film is not going to make you as happy. I wonder if comic book fans are, if these comic book fans, these guys that are finding reasons to hate on the Christopher Nolan trilogy have the same reasons that they hate uh, Matt Reeves, the Batman. Yeah. I mean, so much of it gets thrown off from Heath Ledger passing away because at the end of the dark night, the Joker is not dead. Like the Joker is alive. He's in custody and he's like taken into prison. That's a, you assume. Yeah. And so you have that, you know, if Heath Ledger doesn't pass away, you have that story to tell. Um, it's just a, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like in a way it's kind of like when, uh, Ryan Johnson went and screwed up the sequel trilogy. It's like, oh, crap, the last Jedi happened. How do we fix this? You know, obviously, but like, it's not like The Dark Knight was a bad movie, but something happened that was crucial. Yeah. Well, what do we do? Okay. Um, uh, subsequent Batman movies improved on Nolan's formula. So they're talking about Ben yeah. Affleck being gritty and darker and Robert Pattinson double downing on grounded nature to deliver an even more realistic take on Batman. That doesn't lessen how good the Dark Knight trilogy is. The fact that other Batman movies do it better. Other Batman movies take direct inspiration from that. Yeah. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to put that on Zack Snyder because I think Zack Snyder's been, the Ben Affleck Batman movie would have been uh, incredible if, yeah. Studios would have just stayed out of it, um, which is just, yeah, I don't want to talk about that too much. But then I do like, we, we've debated this a little bit uh, a year and a half ago, but I like The Batman better than Batman Begins and Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Oh, I, 1000. It's, it's I mean, it would be a really good debate at some point, Dark Knight or The Batman. Yeah. 
Yeah, it would be. I think, yeah, there's got to be another Matt Reeves Batman movie to kind of compare that to, I guess. But, yeah. As far as the starting point, yes. It's yeah. better than the starting point of the Nolan. And yeah. lastly, The Dark Knight Rises doesn't give a satisfying conclusion to Batman's story. <laughs> what do you want? What I, exactly. Do you, what do you, you want? You want him to die? Want. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, anyways, that was a a screen rant article that I found interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. That's awesome. Um, something that I have that I know you haven't seen this is we didn't do like a double. Well, I, we did do Bar Barbie and Oppenheimer in the same weekend. Uh, so I've seen Barbie. Um, my two minute thoughts on Barbie not as funny as i thought it was going to be but the production design uh ryan gosling as ken uh margot robbie of course as barbie all uh fantastic um there is a song that ryan gosling sings that is still stuck in my head i it pops <laughs> in my head every single day um it did make me laugh. It wasn't the funniest thing ever. It wasn't as funny as the trailers were making it seem and all the marketing. Um, and the, yeah, the reactions to this are obvious, right? People either love it or they absolutely hate it. And they think that there's like some like men shaming in it. Sure. We, we've, like, earned, we've, it. we've earned that. It's been long. It's been a long time. And there's like a little bit of that, but it's not the whole movie. And like, it's guys, you can get over it. You're not the target audience, right? <laughs> I've heard, I've heard two people, uh, one from, one from my hometown and one from, uh, the town I live in Bristow, both much smaller towns, um, say, oh, I took my daughter to this and we walked out in the first 10 minutes. And I'm like, your daughter is four. Your daughter <laughs> is Cable's age. Like it's, this was not made for that like i don't know the first 10 minutes are the best part of the movie like there's none of that in the first 10 minutes so you gotta you got a grade on it this, okay so first off oppenheimer stamp of approval uh yeah. i don't want to give a grade on it because we may come back to it but barbie i mean your stamp or no stamp barbie i'd give a b minus really i'd like a stamp but like it's fading you know what i mean like yeah you can very clearly tell I haven't pressed it into the ink. This, in a long um, time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the worst movie ever, but it's just, it's a movie. No, it's good. It's good. All right. Unless you have something else you really want to touch on. Um, let's get into our, uh, let's get into movie review time. Um, very quickly. We're going to, these will be a little bit shorter, but it is football month. It is football month, and we did this last year, and I wanted to make this a Jared Knox tradition because we are both huge football fans, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, we were watching football movies. We'll start this one off. Varsity Blues oh, yeah. is this week. Um, let's go ahead and put the blind side down for next week. Okay. okay. Any given Sunday, the following week, and is that game week? Uh, that is going to be scrimmage week, I think. Okay, good. And then that way, Division Three, we can watch it. But if we don't record a podcast because we're either depressed or uh, too busy, <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll put Division Three on there because I'm probably going to watch that regardless. Just don't know if we'll have time to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Varsity Blues. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, I've got to say that – uh, prior to watching this for the podcast, I have not seen this. Um, and the only reference to it that I knew of was from The Office. Because there is an episode in The Office where Michael, where Michael Scott, the manager of the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company, Scranton Branch, takes all of his employees into the conference room and forces them to watch Varsity Blues. Um, and so I've only seen like five seconds of a locker room scene from that just because it was playing in the background. <laughs> so just that's my preface to this movie. That's the only, you know, only prior knowledge I have that this even existed as a movie. I gotcha. I gotcha. <clears throat> All right. So um, do you have pertinent details? 
Uh, yeah, let me pull them up real quick. Okay, so 1999. I know that. I, yeah. I remembered that from yesterday, right it before. Is so, uh, it is so 1999. Yeah, it hurts. There's a scene where that quarterboard uh, mocks. He's 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 got his girlfriend Jules like outside of the pep rally. His jeans <laughs> could fit three other people in them. <laughs> They're the biggest the jeans shoes. I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, 1999, rated R, hour and 45. Again, wish movies could get back to this. Directed by Brian Robbins, written by Peter Illiff. Um, top build cast goes as follows. Uh, James Vanderbeek is Mox. That's Dawson. Dawson's, Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek. Yeah. He was a huge name because of that television show at the time of this. Oh, okay. John Voigt is Coach Kilmer. And oh. Jolie's dad. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, every time they said Kilmer, I always thought Val Kilmer. <laughs> like, I could not get that out of my head. Every time they every time they show the scoreboard and it's the Bud Kilmer Field, I'm like, they have a Bud Light sponsor for a high school. <laughs> they would say Bud, and it's the exact same font as Bud, yeah. Bud Light. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, Paul Walker plays Lance Harbor. R.I.P. Uh, How did you feel the first time you, when you see him walk out onto the porch? Because I was like, oh wow, like I don't know. It was a little bit of a weird moment for me. I was like, man, it was wow. weird. It was weird. Uh, it took me a long time to realize that that was Paul Walker, to be honest with you. I thought it was someone else. Because he's so uh, young. Yeah. Uh, and then Ron Lester is Billy Bob, who, you know, I truly, and I, I say this wholeheartedly, uh, truly had concerns for his health um, watching him in this movie. As an uh, actor or as, as an actor? As a, as a person. Yeah. <laughs> as an actor, his, his diet and just him as a person. Now I believe uh, he, I believe he's he lost a bunch of weight, but he also no. made it dead. I'm looking at this picture right now. He's definitely lost weight. This yeah. IMDb picture he's got. Um, okay, Scott Can is he oh. related to James? That's his James son. Con? Oh, Con. Yeah, that is his son. Okay, yeah, I can see it. I yeah. knew he looked familiar. I was like, okay, I, I got that. He's in one of my all-time favorite movies that my sister's begging us to review, Ready to Rumble. You've heard us talk about this, the Not WCW really. movie. Yeah. He's the I knew him in that before I knew him as Tweeter. Okay. Uh, Richard Lineback is Joe Harbour. Uh, Amy Smart, Julie Harbour. And uh, I think Allie Larder's Darcy. Yep. I think that's it. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, we just sorry, Vince, but the the black running back who is pushed to the back burner for the for Bud Kilmer is also pushed to the back on top build cast. <laughs> uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. I found him. I don't know how to say his name. Eliel, Eliel Swinton. There we go. Give him yeah. the shout out. Does he doesn't even have a last name. His name's just Wendell. <laughs> God, why? <laughs> Uh, okay, this was released January 15th, 1999, uh, filmed in exclusively filmed in Texas. Um, estimated budget of about 16 million dollars. Uh, opened opening weekend worldwide, earned slightly over 15 million, and its worldwide gross is 54 million. So it's made a little bit of money. Yeah, I would imagine like if we could get, if we could find those numbers, the DVD sales are probably oh, yeah. pretty good. I watched it on DVD. Okay. Yeah. Because because uh, I had I was like I was like oh I don't want to rent this do I and I got my PlayStation now okay. I have something that can play a disc so oh, I sweet. throw it in there. Problem with it was um, this is how movies in ninety I don't know if this DVD is from nineteen ninety nine. Pretty sure I bought it at the five dollar bin in Walmart in like two thousand eight but um but uh it uh the subtitles are only french no oh, really <laughs> like there's no just like subtitles where i can hear what people are saying uh-huh it like you go subtitles and it's like french and i'm like huh. no you, give me the american and yeah no. <laughs> english uh <laughs> last last mm -hmm. pertinent details uh the critical ratings imdb gives a 6.5 out of 10 
Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 45 per, excuse me, a 43 percent. And the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is a 76 percent. Mm. OK. Yeah. OK. So um, let's go. My review very okay. quick. Um, I watched this. I was way too young to watch this. Um, okay. <clears throat> I'm think the day it came out on VHS, um, we watched it as a youth football team of fourth graders oh. um, prior to playing on a Saturday. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> or fifth graders. I don't remember what it was. We stayed at a friend's house the night before, and he was like, hey, we just rented Varsity Blues. I'm like, what is Varsity Blues? And I just remember being like, oh, my God. Yeah. I can't cool. wait to play high school football. <laughs> Um, sorry, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think I, at that time I didn't watch it again for till I was like in high school. And then I was like, I love this movie. It's like, it's, this is going to sound bad. But like when I was a, when I was in high school, a high school football player, um, I was like, God, that is wild. I would never do that because I take this game way too seriously. Um, cause I did. Uh, but I knew some friends that were very similar. Like we're talking, throwing house parties and, and the, you know, the underage drinking and all that stuff. And I'm just like, how good could this team possibly be? If like, you know what I mean? I just, I, I don't know. And I feel like I'm getting old, but there was a coach at Bristow that like, I hate that movie. I hate that movie. <laughs> he's like, if that's what our kids are doing, gosh, we're, we're just not doing things right. I don't want to <laughs> promote that. But um, in watching it now, uh, I probably haven't seen this movie in uh, I probably haven't seen this movie in over 10 years uh, since I was in college, but uh, I found it very, very enjoyable. I was like, Oh, this moment's coming up. But I felt like a lot of it was like, this isn't as good as I remember it. There's still really funny things. There's still some things that I'm just like that. Like it's such a, a caricature. It's, it's not a, it's not a picture of, of what high school football is as much as it is like one of those street guys that was like, Hey, let me draw a picture of you. And they make your head like super big or, oh, you, know, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like that. Um, everything about it is, is sort of, uh, like I said, a caricature is what I use where it's like, it's not true characters as much as these are like cartoon characters. There's no, like some of the line delivery from like Wendell when he just freaks out on Mox about mm. not like my mom's been doing my recruitment. And then, Mox is like, I'll get you in the end zone. He's like, all right, Mox, we cool. Like, and then the, you know, the one that I think is the most famous line from this is like, I don't want your life. Like, why did you just turn into Forrest Gump for a second, though, <laughs> Mox? But it's it's over the top. It is what it is. The football is ridiculous. Yeah. I remember we talked about this last year uh, with, like, how accurate is the football. Yeah. This football is no. nuts. Um but I give it a I, I, I give it a C plus. Um, yeah. I don't think I need to watch this movie ever again. And I know that sounds sacrilege for guys that are my age that grew up loving this movie. But it's like just watch it again, man. Um, it doesn't hold up as well as you want it to. It's still got its funny moments. It's probably still has the same moment that you love. But like the filler in between is just not the best. Yeah, I think my review follows along the same lines of that. Like. 100% agree this movie is like a caricature of football. Um, you know, it's a, it's fine for what it is. You know, obviously it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's got some really funny moments. Um, but, like, I think a movie like The Program can do characters, but then also have serious moments and does it way better than Varsity Blues does. Um, you know, like in The Program where – Sotowski or not is, is it Sotowski? It's not Sotowski. Someone gets starting defense and shoves his head through a car window. Latimer. Latimer. What am I think, thinking Sotowski's from? I think that's that's, that's the one with Shard. Yeah. Another good movie. Him. Out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think a C plus is fair. That's what I'm gonna give it. Because it made me laugh. It's it's one of those that I feel good about checking off my list of football movies that i've seen um but definitely not the best football movie um definitely not the worst definitely not a facing the giants i've got it yeah okay <laughs> it's not that bad but um all right i've got so audience reviews real quick um 
I'm going to do three of these because it's just like the reviews for this are so weird on Google. No one gave it stars. No one read the criteria. There's no five star. There's a couple four stars and then there's no one star, two star, three star. They're all just, they just reviewed it and didn't leave stars. Like these are people that don't follow directions. <clears throat> so I just had a little grab bag here. Um, this one's from Mary Clark, who I'm assuming is a nurse. You'll hear after I read this. Okay. Um, well, from watching the movie and the ugliness from the coach shows that he doesn't really give a care about what happens to any of the players. Given an injection where the pain is, doesn't keep it away forever. It is a temporary killer until it wears off and ends up worse in the process. Personally, I don't think the parents realize what is happening until they are in the hospital ER. Yes, ma'am. That's the point. <laughs> Dear Lord, madam. <laughs> oh. um, this is a Sidharth Chand. Movie got its charm. Storyline is good. Each of the individual played its part good enough. Tells you to stand against the odds with your men out there. Shows about parental pressure. Not once fell like turning off the movie. Besides, all will always miss Paul Walker. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh my God. Okay. <clears throat> I did not thank you for talking about the office because this review hold just let me follow me. This is from Cameron Whiteside. My boss Michael made me watch this movie during our movie Mondays in the office. And I have to say it wasn't half bad. In the other movie Mondays, which was a medical video and an episode of Entourage, Michael. God dang it! I gotta watch the office. Got you. I just got God. Wow. Oh my God. I thought this was a real review. I'm done. I'm done with. Okay. That's the varsity blues review. <laughs> oh my. All right. There you go. That's awesome. That's. <laughs> Okay, um, so again, we're since we're tidying up how we do these uh, these pods now uh, as we get into busier football season. Um, any closing thoughts on uh, on Varsity Blues? I think I think it gets my it gets my uh, a light stamp. Um, if you're a football guy, I think it's a I think it's a rite of passage type thing. If you're old enough to check this out, um, but uh, yeah, don't model your game after it. Yeah, no, definitely not. It's it's a light stamp for me. It's you know, if you haven't seen it, it's something you need to check off your your list. If you're definitely if you've played football or if you're a football coach or love the game of football. So yeah. yeah. Like, and I think most people, yeah. That's 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 <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. What a way to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um all right, so now um, that was our review of Varsity Blues. Now let's talk uh, something that's heavy on our minds right now. Um, Secret Invasion came out. Yeah. And, uh, it was one that I think I was really excited for. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're, we'll talk more about it as we get into these lists. We're, gonna, we're going to list in our order of, uh, let's do this, Zach. Let's go uh, the best to the worst of these Marvel series. Okay. Okay. That sound, that sound okay with you? Yeah. So the best Marvel live action. So um, the uh, What If series is not going to make its way on here. And anything outside of Disney Plus is not going to make its way on here either. Okay. Right. So eight is the, the number of shows that they've released so far. Nothing has a season two out yet. Although um, I'm sure we'll talk about a certain trailer fairly early on in this uh, list. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, but Secret Invasion came out and... Uh, I felt like let's go ahead and list these and see, um, is it good? Is, is it bad as a whole? Um, and, uh, you know, Kevin Feige has came out and said, not Kevin Feige, but Bob Iger, the head of the head of Disney is like, we're, we're pumping the brakes on, on this and we're going to put out quality over quantity. Moving yeah. forward. Okay. So, um, number one, uh, number one, let's do, um, uh, I'll do one. You can go one, two. 
I'll go two, three, so on and so forth. Uh, number one for me is Loki. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty easily. Um, I think it had the most effort put into it. I think it's one of the, the better acted. Um, it, it, it was a fairly well contained story in comparison to what we're going to get into with some of these others in that it's not a, in the beginning and for the most of it, it's not a world ending threat that's going on. It's just a cool glimpse into something we haven't seen with the MCU and a cool gateway into what they're in now, which is the multiverse saga, whatever you want to call it, that uh, the multiverse phase. And again, Tom Hiddleston puts in a great performance. Owen Wilson, the lore, the, the character building, the world building. It's a good, it's a great addition to the MCU. So it makes my number one. Yeah, I 100% agree. Loki for me is the best. Uh, like you said, it's the best contained. I think it's the most well written, uh, well acted, and um, <clears throat> a, a show where the you know the budget for the CGI was put to good use. Like I remember when they went to go fix the timeline or something, and they meet you know, crocodile or alligator Loki and all those other, you know, different types of Lokis. And that was really well done. Um, and it felt like in that one that there were actual like stakes, actual stakes that mattered. Like if they didn't get this done, something bad was going to happen. And they paid it off too. You know what I mean? Because what we get into with some of these other ones is like there's there's really no payoff. And I think what you're saying too, with there's like the threat doesn't seem real in a lot of these, but with this one, it seems like okay, this is actually gonna impact the, the Marvel universe without yeah. destroying the world. Right. Um, for me, number two is gonna be Wanda. Hold on, hold on. Since we both have since we both had Loki. Okay. Let's go ahead and do um, the Loki season two trailer. And I showed it to you and I instantly said, we're back. We're back. And you were like, I don't know if we're back yet. Yeah. So what um, about the trailer makes you feel like it's, it's not. Uh, I think it was like, for me, it was missing. I don't know. Like it, we, we just talked about it. And so I feel kind of, you know, maybe pessimistic for saying this, but watching that trailer didn't really make me feel like there was a, a big bad or like some, some high stakes. Like I know they're dealing with the timeline, but like I, you know, Kang is there, but still it just feels, I don't know. It felt really shallow to me. Like it didn't feel like they were going to go super deep into, you know, all that stuff. And I could be wrong. And probably a lot of it is based off of how secret invasion did, but I'm just not high on Marvel right now. And I know Loki's the best show, but I just, I don't know. I just thought that the trailer looked super fun. Looked like they're adding some cool characters. We're going to get Kang is in the trailer. Well, Mr. Victor Timely, I think is his name. It's He's the uh, post credit yeah. scene in Quantumania. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm back. I'm going to be optimistic until I'm not. You know what I mean? And I just think if the same people made this, then we're good to go. I also like the the Loki sort of uh, Spider Verse, like the yeah, you know what I mean. And I think I when I first saw that, I instantly went Deadpool. Well, right, that yeah. Deadpool three is going to have Deadpool doing that, and probably Wolverine doing that, and a bunch of stuff. That's one thing we never talked about either was the oh, the yeah. set links with the Wolverine suit and all that stuff. Deadpool three looks great. Probably oh. going to be a bad movie because of the writer strike and the delays. I don't. My hopes for it are down because of it, but yeah. um, that will still be a Thursday night showing for me. Um, but anyways, okay. go ahead. Uh, number two. <clears throat> number two for me is WandaVision. Um, and just like going forward in my list, like I'll talk about WandaVision, but one and two are very far away from three through ten. Like – Three is not close to two, if that makes sense. The best two shows of these, of, of the ones that have come out, are far and away better than the rest that they've put out. Anyway, WandaVision I thought was really cool and creative. The way that they kind of like 
uh, started it off early, like it was a sitcom. And then it kind of just like, you, you kind of saw the veil start to disappear. And the, the way they dropped subtle hints was amazing. And I remember, I remember all of us were like, Oh, what is going to happen? Like the, I it know the, it's the first one. It's the first. Yeah. yeah. And there were so many, you know, ways that they could go. And we probably as fans, were unfair to you know what was realistic in that show but um still i thought they did a fantastic job with that and uh it's my second favorite uh just and the only reason it's the second is because of how much loki's season finale impacted the mcu and how well it was done it wasn't it wasn't so my two and three i put closer together Loki's on a tier and then I've got numbers two and three on the same tier as well. And then we, then we start to fall off. But my number two is also WandaVision and WandaVision had all this great setup and it paid a lot of stuff off. But it, to me, very, the, it, it, like we, Oh, we have to end on a big CGI fight. We have to oh. like, put, you know, and like oh, the, the music in it, Agatha all along, all that stuff going on as we go. And the, but it has to end with two people on wires fighting in front of a green screen. And the yeah. problem I see with that, too, is like we haven't paid off. There's a white vision out there. I know that has not been brought up. Now, we're luckily finally going to see. Uh, is it Proton or Photon? Uh, Maria Rambo's daughter is going to be in the Marvels, which is so pumped. Um <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah no. I was pumped for that and then secret invasion just happened but um <laughs> but uh it, it it introduced a bunch of cool stuff um again Agatha Harkness uh out there she's getting her own show covering the chaos uh, supposedly still happening uh I the 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 ending of this was so unsatisfactory yeah. and that's where it falls right in with my number three but the ending of this was just let's have a big fight Oh, you thought this was Quicksilver from X Men Universe? No, his name is Ralph Boner. Um, <laughs> he's just a guy, and it and it still doesn't make a lot of. I mean, it makes sense that Agatha was just like, "Oh, look, here's a Quicksilver," and you could have cast any actor in that, but they didn't. They teased us with Evan Peters. Yeah, and now if he shows up in Deadpool three as the X Men Universe Quicksilver, which a lot of characters you know from that 20th Century Fox X Men are supposedly showing up we're talking storm and gene gray and uh, patrick stewart and ian mckellen possibly all these different scenarios are out there then it's going to be really weird yeah um again loved this show a lot of guys that i know that are that were mcu fans hated it and stopped watching after those first two episodes were this weird sitcom thing going on mm-hmm. and i loved it for that oh, my yeah. number three is moon knight Moon Knight, um, again, sets up something really awesome. It's got really cool fights, even though nobody likes the uh, blackout stuff. We, we understand. Um, very dumb. But, um, and we talked, we reviewed this this one extensively in phase one. Like we, we did weekly reviews of episodes. Um, that's probably why we don't do it anymore. Because <laughs> yeah. I think we got we were able to talk to each other about it and got ourselves too hyped up, and then you started to see the ending of this was not going to be as good as you thought. I think the fact that Moon Knight's still in this universe and there's a different, there's a third identity within uh, that character is all great. Um, I love the lore it added with its gods and the Egyptian stuff and all that. The fact that it ends on a giant kaiju fight um, and instead of seeing a great fight from Moon Knight one-on-one, he blacks out again. Yeah. And then there's also the girl that's now the, that's combined with the hippo God. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not as good as I think, but still those first <laughs> five ish episodes I was like, man, they're, they're really going for it. And Oscar Isaac's killing it as Moon Knight. I think, I think a lot of people's problem is he's not as comic accurate as they like, but I'm fine. Cause I'm not a big Moon Knight comics fan. No, uh, my number three is also Moon Knight. Um, this the question is going to be, where are we going to differentiate? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure number eight is going to be the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, this show started off fantastic. Like, I, I remember, you know, that big transformation when it finally happens and Moon Knight's in there beating up that uh, – 
that monster or whatever. And we were all like, oh man, this is going to be like dark and gritty. And then obviously we all know what happened. You explained the the finale and how it ended, but still, I, I feel like really interesting concepts explored. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's better than number four for sure. Um, which for me, number four is going to be the Falcon and Winter Soldier. <clears throat> I thought that dynamic was cool um, of them trying to, you know, find out who the new Captain America is going to be. You know, they go with the guy that is your more stereotypical Captain America. And then you have that kind of conflict between uh, um falcon and and that guy but then you also kind of have this uh underlying i forget her name but um she's the one kind of using um the other captain america the one that they wanted to go with um God, oh, yeah she's gonna be she has to show oh she's in uh, wakanda forever yeah she has to play more of a bigger role because she's she's kind of pulling i think strings. she'll be a brave new world character yeah should be hopefully um not the same number four how about that <laughs> um finally some differentiation um my number four is hawkeye and um i it took me uh three years to watch this <laughs> um i worked my way when it first premiered i watched the first episode i watched the second episode and then i put it on the back burner, life happened, whatever. And then every year I would just kind of watch two more episodes. And then finally I finished it just the other night. Um, what I love about Hawkeye, what I love about it is it knows what it is. There are no worldly stakes. It's simply adding a ground level universe within our MCU, just a different set of things that they can build off of for the future. It's funny. It doesn't pretend to be something it's not. It's never too serious. Um, Hawkeye is probably the second, like my second least favorite character in it. Um, mm -hmm. Haley Steinfeld, uh, I don't know what they're going to do with her, but she feels out of place as well. Um, but their chemistry is really good. There's some good things added, like some good lore. Um, some of the, it, it, and what I really like about it, there's no straying off the MCU path, which some of these shows do. Some of these shows retcon things, and one of them really makes one egregious mistake in making something that no one's ever explored before. This stays within itself, and I just had a lot of fun watching Hawkeye. And it, spoiler alert, introduces Kingpin, and he's good in it. Um, I think it's Echo Cameron New. There's a, there's a deaf, assassin who also has a prosthetic leg um and she's getting her own show apparently oh. and uh she's she's in it and she's got a great character arc and then but the, my favorite character in it, it almost almost makes me want to watch the black widow movie is uh yelena it's uh mm. it's oh god what's her name from florence pew florence pew yeah and there's scenes of florence pew and Haley steinfeld and i'm like whoo ladies come <laughs> But it's, uh, it's, like I said, it's fun. It knows what it is, stays in its lane. And that's why it falls to this say, this third tier for me. Okay. Where um, they stay in their lane, they do what they do, and they don't differentiate too much. Okay. Okay. Um, my number five is She-Hulk. Uh, for the same reasons as Hawkeye, it knows what it is. It stays in its own lane. It's not for every MCU fan. Um, it's more for She-Hulk fans. Um, people either loved or hated the finale of it where it was like super meta, but it was accurately meta. It was talking about, we're not going to have a big CGI fight because we don't need that. We don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like that's one of the problems with these Marvel shows. Like they just really throw in your face. I'm like, I respect it. It's not a, there's nothing super crazy about it. It's just, it introduces cool things. I'll never rewatch it. I like the dead, the d daredevil stuff. And she's fun. You don't ever have to like, we'll see her again at some point, but you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm on five now, right? You just yeah. gave your five. Uh, my number five is going to be Hawkeye. Um, kind of the same reasons, you know, that you laid out. Um, I always like a kingpin appearance. Um, I haven't seen this entire show like all the way through, but I've seen, 
scenes that are the most important. Um, and really, I, I know what happens in the show. So, um, you know, like you said, it's it's a grounded story. It doesn't try to do something absolutely crazy. So um, for that, I have to give it props, give it a five. Another thing about Hawkeye that I didn't know was a thing. There's the the Rogers musical, and it's like modeled after it's modeled after Hamilton, but it's about Captain America. It's about Steve Rogers. Mm-hmm. There's a post credit scene in Hawkeye where they have it's a it's a Broadway number called "I Can Do This All Day," and it's a, literally about like the Battle of New York. Uh, oh, and, it, 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 and it's like it's good. Like it's like I was like, okay, this is over. And I was like, wait, is there a post credits? And I was like, oh, there is. And it, it's there's nothing. There's no kingpin. There's no one in the audience. It's just this is a song from that musical. Yeah, it's the my shot of oh okay of that. It's it's really it's it's fun. It's not um, amazing, my number six is going to be She Hulk, um, and a lot of it is because of its finale, like the way that it ends, and it you know I think the finale is probably the better parts from what i've heard it's the better parts of that show um you know there's daredevil in it and I, i've watched the beginning episodes with uh bruce banner um and you know i think it's fine for what it is it's not obviously not the best show but it is not the worst because um there's a recent one that is pretty bad but yeah the, my, my number six is going to be she hulk okay um, last one, number six for me, that's on my third tier. And I was really splitting hairs with all three of these. Cause I, I enjoyed all of them. Don't need to watch them again. Great additional characters, all that stuff. There's a future form in the MCU, but it's Miss Marvel. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not the target demographic for Miss Marvel. I'm not hundred percent sure who is, but again, this is a teenage, uh, you know, coming of age type deal where they're introducing a, a, you know, a new element, a new lore into the MCU. And I think it does just a, it does a, a fine job. Again, no giant worldly stakes yet. It stays in its own lane, um, introduces one, really one essential new character uh, with Kamala Khan and it being a, uh, and, uh, and her being, you know, in the Marvels now, um, like I said, I like it. I don't love it. Again, it's got a rough finale. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. of these three, this has the worst finale, which is why I think I put it the lowest. But again, it's it's nothing for me to hate, hate. Like, you know, I don't hate this finale as much as I hate Moon Knight. And that's probably because the show Moon Knight is so good. And then the finale missed the mark so badly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Marvel's number six for me. Number seven, here's our biggest differentiation. Number seven is Falcon and Winter Soldier. This show sucked. <laughs> this show, um, and I understand the reasons that this show sucked. They had to rewrite this on the fly. Yeah. Because it was about a virus. Yeah. And it was set to come out during it, like COVID. COVID. So they're yeah. like, you know, they're, they're, they're scraping all these ideas. And then like, you're talking about like, oh, they're trying to get, uh, He's who's the next Captain America? Steve Rogers gives Sam Wilson the shield at the end of Endgame. That yeah. shouldn't be a question. Yeah. Um, I think the highlight of this is um, is uh, oh my god, the soldier, the 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 bad Captain America. Why can I yeah. not do his name? I need to look it up because that's going to bother me. That's making me super mad. The 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 Sharon Carter stuff is good. Um, the the like Assassins Island, whatever that you know place. It's the Moss Eisley, if you will, of like the MCU now. A mm-hmm. hive of scum and villainy. Um, I like that. I like Julie Louis Dreyfus being added as this sort of head figure for the bad. For, you know, for what will become a uh, hammer or whatever the the bad guys are that they're trying to take on. Um, Thunderbolts, if you will. Um, yeah. But did you find that guy's name yet? Uh, his name's John Walker, but I don't know what his like superhero name is. I got one in the in the comics too. John Walker has an American flag tattoo, like that goes from his forehead like to his nose. A, oh, a, okay. it, it's pretty accurate, but like I like the idea too that like the lore they added with that show this is the best thing. The lore of mm-hmm. uh, Steve Rogers wasn't the last Captain America. 
He's the first, but they kept trying and they weren't able to make things as good, but they were getting pretty close. But this show, the finale of this is so US bad. Agent. U.S. Agent. Is U.S. Well. Agent. Thank you so much. But this finale is so bad. And we've talked about it. It's, you know, you have to do better, Senator. Oh, yeah. You have to do this. Like, we halt this Marvel show to bring you a, a PSA <laughs> about, you know, America and how we're all living bad. It's like, dude, we're, I'm on some escapism here. Right. I also, you know, sorry, Vince. Um, his suit is terrible. It's, it's, it's awful. I don't care what you say. He can be Captain America with his same suit. Slap a flag on it somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then it, how many times is he even suited up? I think just that episode, right? Just that, just that finale. Here's what we're learning. What I'm really learning from the from the MCU Disney Plus stuff. They do not know how to do espionage. They do not know how to properly do spy things. No. They hint that oh, there's going to be something good here, and then they just blow it. And that's what this is. There's not a lot of good sneak in. There's not a lot of good twists. There's not a lot. Of just I I every week just hated this show more. The more it went yeah. on. And I'm just, I don't, I don't, like I said, U.S. agent and uh, the, I forget what the place is called. The scum place is probably the best thing about it. The fight scene with uh, the uh, Dora Milaje in the like hotel room where they shut Bucky's arm off. That's pretty cool. Okay. Other than that, man, not a fan, not yeah. a fan of this. No. And then just, I, I'm, just, I'm really worried Bucky is no longer going to be Bucky the next time we see him, he, he's just, he shouldn't be happy. He should be pissed off. He should be almost Punisher level the whole time. Instead, now he's, he's a comedic character. Yeah. Not a fan. Um, am I up number yeah. seven? Eight. Uh, I've got two more left. So I'm going to go number seven. Yeah, seven for you. Eight for me. Okay. Number seven for me is Miss Marvel. Um, I actually did not hate the beginning of this. Um, as it went on, it got a little bit unbearable. And like you said, you know, I'm probably not the target audience for it. It was, I think it was a slight step up from like a, you know, like a Disney Channel show, um, which is fine if that's what it is. You know, not, you know, it's fine. It was, a, it was an origin story too, so it was it at least had that going for it where it was like okay at least we can learn about this character that we have no prior knowledge about um you know the the finale was awful but um and it's seven it's the second worst show in my opinion so there's not a lot of good things i can say but it's just not as bad as number eight which is secret invasion i'm and we both have the same num we're, we're both eight right because that's all you have left it's not even close it's not what, what it's, an absolute just disrespect to the Secret Invasion comic, to what a waste of money. What a waste, like the, the budget that was on this thing, what a waste of Samuel L. Jackson's time, what a waste of Amelia Clark's time. Like the fact that this was greenlit and, you know, I just, so much about Secret Invasion pisses me off do you think there was ever so the thing about this show is it just came out so i'm hearing a lot of people review and a lot of people are bringing up points about it do you think there was a good show there and then they abandoned it and then four months of reshoots to make it to add this like big giant fight at the end because you want to talk about bad finales the worst the worst and, and this one's where it ain't close the worst finale I don't know because I just don't, I really don't know. You've got, and you've got no excuse either. When, when you've got Samuel Jackson for Nick Fury, you've got Ben Mendelsohn, who is great. He's a phenomenal actor. He was out the MCU. MCU. Out the MCU now. He's, he's done. And you've got Amelia Clark, who was uh, a star in Game of Thrones. Also a, a girl who curses finales, apparently. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this was like secret invasion without, you know, the, there's just so much that they could have done. They could have, you know, when obviously the scrolls can take the form of another person, but how often does that actually happen? It happens like they get locked into one. 
the bad guys are locked into one person. Yeah. So it's like, and there's a million of them. Mm -hmm. And where are they? Where there's never been a clue about a scroll anywhere besides Captain Marvel. Yeah. That's the worst thing about this is you did this and you never hinted anywhere. Yeah. And you could have done it with this show. Perhaps you could have been like started hinting, but instead they're just like, this guy's a scroll. Rhodey's a scroll. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it, how yeah. long has it been a scroll? According to the writer and the director of this show since civil war, which yeah. means the entirety of infinity war and in game, he was not Rhodey. He was not James Rhodes. Yeah. So the guy, and this is where people are super mad. The guy that held Tony Stark's hand as he died it was cool. not, was not Rhodey. Yeah. This, the one I heard these guys talking about it. Rhodey has a moment with Nebula in Endgame where they're mm -hmm. talking about like, yeah. I'm a machine now. I'm part machine. I remember that's that. not, that's not true. You're a scroll. Yeah. That heartfelt moment gone. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I just, and there's, again, there's no hints in the MCU that anyone is a scroll. No. So the hope was this show would introduce some of that. Maybe perhaps, you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. instead, if armor wars ever comes out, which don't forget, it's still on the slate with yeah. Don Cheadle, with Rhodey, he's supposed to be in it. If Rhodey in that show, all they're going to have is be like, yeah, I've been in a coma since 2016. I don't remember any of this stuff. There was yeah. a snap. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, I, this is really bad. Really bad. Um, and, and probably the worst and just – laziness it's just pure laziness is the fact now that gaia is the most powerful mcu character ever period period and there's no reason for her knowing how to use how to use or why do you, she doesn't know who those people are like you know do you realize that she doesn't realize who some of those people are like she doesn't know who mantis is why would she ever know who mantis is let alone know how to do the sleep thing why does she get Ebony Miles? Why does she get the rings? Why Why is Korg? You know, I mean, there's so many. And there's no hints that, like, people were picking up DNA. It's just like a one word, like, oh, there's been a lot of battles, so we've always been collecting their DNA. Yeah, it's like, what a, what a just lazy. Uh, and then what do they do? They kill the villain. Yeah. So, and I, I here's the one thing I'm going to give myself props for because I haven't heard anybody else say this. I said it to you. I think people are like, what do you do with Gaia? What do you do with now the most powerful? You let someone kill her instantly. Someone, yeah. someone shows up that's like the big bad, and they're like, and the first thing they do is like, who's the most powerful person here? Mm -hmm. uh, Wanda? No, not ready for that smoke. Where's that super scroll at? And just mm -hmm. everything, everyone's like, okay, we got a problem. Yeah, yeah, that's to me, that's the best way to do it. Because you can't keep, you, you cannot keep her around. No. No. Um, so there's a lot of, like, and then in the end, nothing happens. Yeah. And Fury's gone. Fury left. It, it starts, it ends the exact same way it started. Yeah. Except now there's a Supreme being. Yeah. I, there's a lot, I mean, we could go on for a long time, but we're up against our time right now. Um, yeah. it is, I hate it. I do not like it. And I'm, really i'm mad at myself that i was like no it's not bad guys like let's just let them build let them you know they're in the early stages early on yeah let these guys cook you know they're still they're still cutting onions yeah you know? they're seasoning letting stuff marinate and then it's like oh no very quickly it just poo poo yeah. the, and <sighs> roadie the scroll that is roadie just being like send the nukes mr president send the nukes like, like it's like Dude, what are we doing? Yeah. The president is an idiot for not just being like, oh, he's right. Yeah, I don't need to send those nukes. Like, <laughs> Nick Fury's here. Like, I uh, just no intrigue about it. I think the best addition of a character is the uh, the British lady. Oh, true. Yeah, she did a really She's good cool. job. She's cool. She's in it. I like that. I hate they killed Mendo. I hate that they killed um, Graphic. I know. Let that guy be out there. Yeah. Or let that guy be contained somewhere. I don't know. But yeah, now it's like, dead. 
do you think the MCU will ever go back and touch on scrolls or they're just like, yeah, they live here, but they're pretty chill. No, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Because essentially that's what they've done for since 2007. Because yeah. they've been there the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I also, not. side note, Gravik is a kin in Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. Also, so he acting wise is incredible. The yeah. block blocking, the staging of his like monologue with Nick Fury. I'm like, are we at a community theater Shakespeare? Like do something like right. it was rough. He's, good. he's got great delivery. And so does the, the British lady whose name we can't remember. Yeah. Well, all right. So that's our list um, of live action Marvel films. Um, you want to wrap this thing up or do you want to do a weekly watch list real quick? Uh, let's wrap it up and then we could do like a weekly watch list as its own episode, maybe like later this week. I say, cause I've got, a, there, it's been a long time. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, anyways, that was Jared Knox. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on all the socials. We're out there. Are we out there on threads? Uh, yeah, we are, but it's not, you know, so, threads kind of died in a yeah. day. So follow us on X. Cause it's, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I expect our next episode we'll have some uh, we'll have some thoughts on the writer strike possibly coming to an end. Yeah, or soon. Big news coming out of that. That's awesome. Um, but other than that, man, thank you guys so much. Sorry we were gone. Uh, tune in next week. We'll have uh, we'll have another list. We'll talk some news. We'll bring some points in. Have a good time, and we will be reviewing the Blind Side. Blind Side. I hate right, it. Let's go. I hate it. Yeah. Peace. See you.